Hey everyone, welcome to UB Chef, uh, where this week it's Mother's Day. Uh, so I've got a five course menu on the way for you, which as usual, I'm gonna take you through plating each dish, a few little tips on plating it up. Um, as always, really, really easy. Uh, we're sending you all the components to essentially heat up in the oven, plate up like a pro. Uh, we'll give you, you can see the pictures uh, online and of course this video to make it nice and easy. Uh, remember that there are future menus on the website. Uh, there's Easter to choose from, a uh, lovely menu for that. Uh, wild garlic on there, lots of forage stuff, sea herbs coming back in. Um, and then we've got all of our other weekend menus on there as well. So if you haven't tried UV Chef before, give it a go, it's great fun. Um, let's get cooking now. I'm gonna take you through the five course menu as well as five courses which are suitable for vegans, gluten free and dairy free as well. Um, really, really important to remember that. A uh, guest said to me last week, I should point that out, uh, because they've had lots of menu boxes, uh, and what they notice with UB Chef is that we go out of our way all the time to cater for any dietary sort of requirements. So if we can, we will absolutely do it. Uh, so this, this week, the five course menu, uh, we've got five almost identical courses going alongside. I'll show you how to play them up as well. So let's get cooking. So first course on my mother and Sunday lunch menu, um, we've got a gluten cauliflower. So cauliflower gluten is here, lovely and silky smooth. That's all done in there. And then we've got uh, these little cigarettes. So these are made of foie de brick pastry, lovely thin pastry. Uh, and inside here, you've got cauliflower cheese. So we've caramelized that cauliflower cheese under the grill. And then we've just piped it very, very thin, fried them off for you so that these are just gonna go in the oven. Um, garnishes, little salad, you see here of pickled cauliflower. You've got the purple cauliflower in there. You've got like an orangey cauliflower as well. Uh, some of the stalk, really like thinly sliced, lovely as well. Um, the top is going to be this beautiful ducker. Uh, so in here you see you've got the like, black and white sesame seeds, um, you've got all, lots of herbs, spices in there, and then you've got parsley, so dehydrated flat leaf parsley, ground down, that's in there. Nasturtium leaves, which we just send them a little cotton pad just on the top, just to keep them nice and fresh. And, and a uh, parmesan oil as well. So we save up all of our parmesan in the freezer, all of the, like, the trimmings of a parmesan, and then we infuse it with rapeseed oil to get this beautiful fragrant oil, really, really nice. And as I said, running alongside, um, we made a completely vegan uh, velouté here, cauliflower velouté. Um, instead of a cigarette, because of course these, these have got gluten in, uh, so we've done, uh, we made our own gluten-free bread and we've done this cauliflower cheese toasty on there. Um, we've got the same cauliflower, instead of the uh, parmesan oil, we've got a little pomery mustard dressing, we've got the ducker and we've got the nasturtion. So see what I mean? Put every effort into making sure that if you can't eat something, because uh, so many that so many dietary requirements, so many allergies nowadays, uh, really important that you can still enjoy the food. So, first thing to do, get even the cigarettes if that's what you're using, and your cheese toasty. You're going to take about six minutes in the oven, no longer, and then your velouté. They're just going to go on the stove. I'm just going to warm them nice and slowly. Um, keep a whisk in there cauliflower it will catch on the bottom of the pan quite easily so make sure you keep it stir. Uh, we'll be back in about five minutes where I'm going to show you how to put a plate up both of these starters. So I'm all ready to plate up now so two plates I'm, I'm going to serve my velouté uh, just in a little pot uh, and then the cauliflower and the little cigarettes just on the side so I've got my two pots there. Both my veloutes are all ready to go so that's two different versions and let's have a quick check on the Toasty and cigarette. It catch quite quickly, so yeah, not not far off. All right, let's get our salad dressing. So as I said, this is your little pickled cauliflower salad. I'm just going to add a little bit of salt to each one. Just a little bit of seasoning, and then I'm just going to arrange my cauliflower salad on the plate. Try and just sort of disperse the colours a little bit. All about that presentation. And then this is basically just so we can sit our cigarettes on the top. Let's do exactly the same for our uh, vegan version. And then we'll press, get our cigarette out, out after this. So there we go. Then just going to put a little bit of nasturtion onto both of these. Save a bit for the top. This is just so when it comes out of the oven, I can 
get it to the table nice and quick. There we go, a few nice leaves of that. Lovely and peppery with nasturtium. Right, let's get our cigarettes out. First of all, the cauliflower cheese version. And then the cauliflower cheese toasty version. And then all I'm gonna do is literally present those just on the top, like so. And then we've got our toasties just here. present them with a little clear down and then coming back what we want to do is get your ducker sturgeon and oil ready for both and then we'll serve up our velouté like so and our vegan version it goes and then a little bit of ducker little lovely little crunchy top on there and the same again a little bit of a clean up on the bowl there make sure that presentation is bang on there we go and then I'm going to get parmesan oil I love that it's based with rapeseed oil so lovely little yellow on the top and then give your mustard dressing a stir to go into the top of the vegan version. There we go. Finally, let's take some more nasturtium leaves on the top like so. We've left the stalks nice and long on these so you can they look really beautiful when they're like that. Like that. And then, just to finish off, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of Parmesan oil just on top to almost dress the salad. And the same with the mustard as well. And there you go. So, little clean down. Two versions. As we said, no one's getting left out here on Mother's Day. Cauliflower velouté. Um, cauliflower cheese cigarettes uh, and again cauliflower cheese toasties uh, with this version. Hope you enjoy the first course. Next course uh, on the menu. Uh, so this is a scallop, Scottish scallop baked in a shell. Uh, you see here what we've got top, uh, sort of two tops of a uh, of shell. Uh, inside here we've got scallop, we've got uh, purple potato, uh, we've got a lovely salad potato in there as well, uh, we've got a wild garlic bechamel sauce uh, and then we've got some really really uh, lovely so, uh, winter truffle, sorry, jet black truffle sliced very red, very thinly going through the layers. Um, pastry, puff pastry around the outside and that seals it and almost makes it an oven. So when this goes in we're going to bake it for about 12-14 minutes, a good sort of way to tell where it's cooked the pastry is going to be all golden around the outside uh, and then a bit of seaweed to sit the actual scallop on uh, this isn't for eating um, uh, it's blanched it's all cleaned but that's just so, so we can sit the scallop shell and it's not going to go over the plate and then wild garlic pesto um, we foraged the garlic uh, just yesterday um, so parmesan in there uh, wild garlic love olive oil really nice and that's just going to get spooned into out the table my course running alongside I've got a wild mushroom uh, risotto so you've got the risotto rice here um, a little vegan de dairy free butter in there this is our cooking liquor so we've cooked the risotto rice in this then the idea is you pour this back on um, just before you start cooking and then you don't need to do anything else apart from heat this up keep stirring it um, about four minutes once it comes up to the simmer and that's ready to go um, and then we've got Pesto again, wild garlic pesto, this time no cheese in there, no dairy, sorry. Uh, and then we've got some nice woodland mushrooms, we've got some girol in there, pierre de mouton, um, a little trompette de la mort. Uh, they're already sautéed, just need warming up. Salsify, uh, and then we've got a little dressing uh, just to go on the top. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our scallop in the oven now. So 14 minutes. And then when I come back, um, I'm going to show you how to put the two dishes together. Remember the risotto is going to go onto the heat, 
and you're going to be stirring that. I'll show you at the end how, how I put it together, but that's going to go onto the heat. And of course, your mushrooms and your salsa in about five, six minutes in the oven. We'll be back shortly and I'll show you how, how to put both dishes together. So, I'm just finishing my risotto here. This is my woodland mushroom risotto. It's just been on about four minutes from the simmer. So I've got my bowl ready to go. My scallops has got about two minutes coming out, so just keep stirring your risotto now. And as you stir it, it will become even more creamy. So that's all good to go. Don't forget, all seasoned, it's all ready. Um, have a taste if you want to put more salt in, of course, no problem at all. Uh, what I'm going to do for my scallop is take my seaweed. This is obviously, again, just to reiterate, just for presentation purposes. So I'm going to just arrange that on my plate. And what you're trying to do here is create a bed for the scallop to sit on. And it will stop it skedaddling over the plate. So. Let's get our scallop out. Have a little check. Do you see there? Pastry's all nice and golden. Lovely. Now that I've finished off those last two minutes, I'm going to get my salsa for you out. And of course, my mushrooms for risotto. So, let's get this dish plated before our scallops come out. So, there we go. Risotto all in there. Flatten it down with your spatula. Like so, you can smell it. Lovely, lovely earthiness of all those mushrooms coming off of it. And then what I'm gonna do, take some of my sauteed mushrooms, just add them all around. You got those really nice trumpets in there, deep black color. You've got some Giraud, a Pierre de Mouton. It's a really nice selection. So plenty, plenty of mushrooms to go along there. And then I'm going to get my salsa fee. Little piece of salsa fee. We've just cooked this in acidulated water or with lemon. Um, and then we've just char grilled it on the stove. So I'm just going to get those. Then I'm going to take some of my pesto. Remember, this is wild garlic pesto, no cheese in there of a dairy kind. It's got like a, a little cheddar going through it, but just made of the coconut oil. So that's going to go on. And then lastly, Madeira dressing. I just like to add a dressing just to cut through all that richness. So here we go. And again, instantly you can smell that Madeira kind of warming up on that risotto, lovely. That's my timer. So that's all ready to plate. Let's get our scallop out. Now be really, really careful with this, super hot. Take your cloth. And watch, because just around the edges here, this is where steam can be now escaping. So just be nice and careful. Lift it up carefully onto your serving plate. Look at that, doesn't he look beautiful? Get rid of that hot tray. And then what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this to your table, uh, present it to your guests, and they're gonna go, wow, this is amazing. My well, mum's gonna be like, did you make that yourself? And of course you can lie and say, say yes. Um, but now we're gonna get a knife. I'm going to put it just in the inside, wiggle it, and I'm going to show you how to uh, take the shell off um, and present it. I'm going to give it just a couple of minutes, and uh, that would be the time it takes to get it to the table, just to cool down slightly, otherwise you can get hit with that steam coming out. So that's my scallops baked in the shell. Remember, I've got my wild garlic pesto to serve with, and I've got my risotto, woodland mushrooms with salsa feet, and also the wild garlic pesto. Hope you enjoy them both. So you've got your scallop to the dinner table now. Now I'm show you, going to show you how to open it. So make sure your pesto, take it to the table in a nice little dish to present it. Um, get a knife, uh, and it can be the knife that, the, that uh, your guests are eating with, mum's eating with, no problem at all. Remember, the top of the shell is still going to be quite hot. So if you're going to hold it anywhere, hold it on the pastry, and then just put your tip of the knife just into the scallop, and you can just sort of like feel around and then you'll feel when you go into the, the join in between the two shelves. So, see like that, and then just clip, see? Little flick of a knife, and look at that, out it comes. Doesn't that look beautiful? So you'll see it, this is all now steaming at the table. 
There you've got your scallops in there. You've got your truffle, purple potatoes, a wild garlic puree, and just, oh, that smell, absolutely stunning. And then what I suggest you do, just move that little shell to one side and then turn that back over and then you just got your shell on the side of a plate. And what you want to do, um, of course, you can use the pastry around the outside almost to sort of pull off and dip in um, to all that lovely wild garlic puree in there. Um, and get to the table quick, obviously get it open as soon as possible, and then oh, you just get stunning kind of aromas coming off of it. So hope you enjoy the fish course uh, with the scallops. Remember, wild garlic pesto, a little uh, spoon of that in the centre, um, and yeah, one of my favourite courses. Hope you enjoy it, and of course, hope mum enjoys it. So on to the main course now. I hope you enjoyed that fish course with a scallop and the uh, wild mushroom risotto. Uh, so the next two courses, uh, what we've got, um, this lovely Welsh rump of lamb, been barbecued, um, it's been cooked for a long time on sous vide to render the fat down, uh, really nice. This is gonna go in the oven. Um, so all you need to do is just cut the basket and then carefully take that lamb rump out. Now remember this is cooked already um, and just requires finishing off in the oven. So that's gonna go in now, about 12 to 14 minutes. Little rinse of the hands. And then back to show you the rest of the garnishes. So here for the lamb is, we've got a lamb croquette. Uh, this is made of a shoulder of lamb, slow cooked. Um, lovely rose harissa in there, where made of rose petals and chili. Uh, and it's in panko breadcrumbs. That's gonna take about eight to 10 minutes in the oven. We've got buttered spinach, four to five minutes in the oven. Um, we've got a lovely lamb, uh, lamb red wine sauce, we've got carrot puree, list goes on. We've got a uh, little pickled carrots here, so you've got the purple carrots, you've got yellow, you've got orange, you've got white as well. When they come out, a little bit of oil on them, just to dress them, and they're literally all ready to go. Room temperature, really important. Then I've got some little chefy cresses to go on the top in here. We've got some radish stems, shizo cress, that's all ready. So that's gonna go in the oven shortly. And then I'm gonna show you the um, vegetarian vegan course. So here, Hasselback potatoes. Um, this is um, little pink fur, apple potatoes here, which we've sliced very, very thinly. And if you can just see there, but it's got truffle in every single slice. Um, that, that black winter truffle and the truffle butter in there as well. That's gonna go in, pan of water, five minutes, okay? So in that goes. And then we're gonna empty out to a tray in the oven for about 14 minutes. So in tandem with the lamb. Uh, serving with that, we've got a uh, little sprouting broccoli. We've got broccoli puree, crispy rice that looks, looks like and tastes like sugar puffs, um, and a truffle dressing to go with that. Um, so we'll be back in about 10 or so minutes. Um, lamb's cooking, this is gonna go in shortly, uh, and I'll show you how to put both of these courses together. Okay, so all ready to plate the main course up now. So I've got my plates here. So nice black plate, nice bowl for the broccoli. So purees, first of all. That's my broccoli puree, and I've got my Vichy carrot puree there. Lamb sauce, that's my lamb red wine sauce. I've already taken my lamb rump out. That's just been resting for a few minutes. And then let's put on that. Hasselbacks out. That's our Hasselback potatoes there. You see how they the trademark, they kind of like just separated all the layers. And then we've got our little croquettes. We've got our spinach. And we've got our tender stem broccoli. So let's get our um, vegetarian plated first of all. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take a little bit of puree. I'm just gonna put three nice spoons of the puree just on the base. Then I'm gonna put some of my broccoli, which has just been charred, so blanched and then charred on the top, just to give it a nice little smoky flavor. So you got about seven or seven or eight pieces or so. 
So, just going to save a couple for the top. There we go. Then, get your little Hasselback potatoes on. I'm going to just shine up the top. Tiny bit of rapeseed oil on there. And then, carefully lift those up. See all that truffle. I wish you could smell it. it. Smells absolutely divine. Then, next one. Just arrange that in there like so. And then we've got the final, final one there. Careful they are. It's really, really hot. Next, another little bit of broccoli. Just get a bit of height on there if you can. And then I'm gonna get my truffle dressing, give it a good stir, and go all over the fat. And again, that vinegariness in there. It's gonna go lovely with all of that rich potato. And finally, your crispy wild rice. This is basically just deep fried at a very, very hot temperature and it just puffs up. Lovely little crunch on the top. So, that's our vegetarian done. Let's move my lamb rump out of the way, onto the board. I've got my spinach there ready, and I've got my croquette. So, croquette is going on the plate. Tiny little bit of molten salt, just on the top. And then, let's get our lamb rump. Now, important here, when you look at the lamb rump, you'll kind of see the grain of the meat. So you can see it there goes along that way. Whenever you're slicing, you want to be slicing across the grain of the meat, then you end up with lovely tender meat. So that's just, it just slips through there like butter. So nice, even slices, or about six or seven slices, I'd say. There we go. Then a bit of seasoning in between each layer. And then take the bottom two pieces of lamb. That's gonna be like your base. And then fan those ones around. And that is the lamb all ready to go on the plate. Let's get our spinach. So I'm gonna place a little bit of spinach just there, like so. I'm gonna get my lamb and I'm gonna See there, just sit that on top of that spinach. And then, all right, let's get carrot puree next. So we'll take, gonna take a nice little spoon of that. I'm just gonna twist that plate back around so I can get that nice and where I want it to go. Nice little spoon. Spoon of a couple of the carrot puree. That's silky smooth, really, really nice. And then you've got your pickled carrots. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of just sort of like interleave them on the top of that lamb shoulder. And you'll, you'll see you get some of that red like fat come out of the um, shoulder. That's the harissa, uh, which has got real deep red color. So just if you kind of wonder what that is coming out of there. Another piece on there, and then let's get a final bit of that deep purple carrot. There we go. Then take some of your little chefy micro shoots. Again, I'm, I'm not just putting these on there for show. You've got a really nice pepperiness that comes from that radish um, and the shizo cress as well. Just really nice flavour. It goes beautifully with the carrot. So just gonna. Few more on there, like so, and then finally, I know you're desperate to eat, so a little bit of lamb sauce. This is our red wine sauce. Touch around, make sure you take serve more on the table as well. Take a nice little jug of it because that lamb shoulder is a uh, needs a lovely bit of sauce just to go through it. So there we go, two dishes for you. That's my rump of lamb. Uh, Welsh lamb, croquette, pickled carrots, carrot puree, and my Hasselback potatoes uh, with truffle, broccoli puree, crispy wild rice, and of course all of this vegan, gluten, and dairy-free. So two main courses there for uh, for mum. Hope she enjoys them. 
uh, and we'll be right back with desserts. Okay, cheese course now. Uh, so if you've ordered a cheese, we have two options for you. Um, we've got the uh, UBS Chef Weekly Cheese Tasting. Uh, so as usual, I've got my selection of cheeses um, um, and quince paste in there. House chutney, which is uh, rhubarb based this week, uh, four Yorkshire rhubarb. And then we've got fennel seed crackers. Absolutely love these, really, really nice. We just do it all like a bread dough, roll it through the pasta machine with these fennel seeds in, uh, nice and thin. Um, and then what we're gonna do I think, for the dietary version, um, we've done a fondue. Um, not done one of these before, but actually uh, really, really happy with it. Um, this is, um, so white wine based, uh, but it's a vegan white wine. Um, and then I've got vegan cheese that's gone into it, touch of mustard, touch of English mustard. Um, so this is gonna go in now into the water, about five minutes in there, no longer. And then um, let's bring my plates over. That's my cheese board with my chutney. Um, and then I've sent you a little eco tub, you can serve it in here if, if you like, of course, and go straight in the, in the old compost after. Um, and then I've got fennel seed crackers, I've got my rhubarb chutney, and I've also got a little, um, little herbs, uh, sorry, micro crest to go on the top. So we've got some little red mustard frills in there, we've got some radish, lovely and peppery, really nice. So let's get our cheese on the way whilst we're waiting for our fondue. So very, very carefully cut your Little bag open, take the cheeses out. As I always say, most important that the cheeses are allowed to come up to room temperature. Um, so let's start off. First one, Flower Marie. You see that, look at it, perfectly mature, but just starting to sort of weep just around the um, outside. Then next, we've got cheese called Durris. That's gonna go on there. Next one, this is a German cheese called Old Grandale. Uh, you see that lovely wax skin just on the outside. We've left it on for presentation. Montgomery's cheddar, just a yeah, real classic cheddar going on there. And then we've got this ultra creamy gorgonzola. So that's going to go on. And then let's get my spoon. I'm going to get a little bit of quince on there. And then just get some of your fennel seed crackers, just rest them just up against the side. And there we go. So that's my Yubi Chef cheese tasting board. Of course, a little pot. Let's serve our rhubarb chutney in there. There we go. So that's our first one. Clean that room on that. Then, as we said, we've got the fondue coming on here. So I'm just gonna get my plate uh, get my little dish all ready to go, and then be careful with it, but just hook out your fondue, like so. Just watch that steam, be really, really hot. And then bring that over to your board. As I say, be really careful of this, just because it's gonna be quite hot inside. Get the back of a knife and just move all the fondue over to start with. And then I'm gonna cut the corner off, and then move the mix out of the way of hand, hold it over, and then that's all going to go into my dish, like so. Wear a pair of rubber gloves if your hands are not like asbestos like mine. And there we go, so fondue is all in. Give it a little tap. So really, really important with this, but it goes out to the table nice and hot. So I'm going to get my rhubarb chutney, I'm going to put a nice little spoon of that in the centre. And then I'm going to get some of those micro herbs. Just going to garnish them just quickly around. And again, you want to serve this nice and fast before they wilt. But the idea is that now we'll get this to the table. Tiny little flecks of mould and salt on the top. A little bit of rapeseed. Just for that lovely little nutty flavour. Let's get some crackers on there. Just on the side, like so. And what I thought of this, uh, 
is then you could get those crackers and you can just break them off, dip into your uh, fondue with some of that chutney, some of those little peppery cresses on there. So that's my uh, little vegan course. And then of course the cheese board with the rhubarb chutney and the same crackers. So let's get uh, cheese course out and hope you enjoy it. So now it's on to desserts, uh, final course for the mother and Sunday lunch. Um, two desserts for you. Uh, first one we've got a little take on lemon meringue. Uh, so I've got my lemon tart just here. Um, this is going to go in the oven about four to five minutes. And that goes. Um, and then the garnishes with that. You see I've got my little meringue shell here. So this is just a vanilla meringue. And, and you see what I've done already, hollowed the centre out for you. Um, so it all will be revealed shortly. Um, lemon curd to go with crystallised mint leaves and some comfy lemon as well uh, and then I've got a little yoghurt cream uh, so yoghurt um, whipped up, a touch of whipped cream in there uh, but say, just a touch of sour, sour in there um, to of course complement the really sweet meringue um, next dessert um, and again this is our uh, final course of, a, of our dietary menu so I've got a lemon posset in here dairy free lemon posset nice and light, um, very lightly set um, garnished with um, little segments of uh, pink grapefruit, orange, nice and uh, citrusy. We've got a lemon cake uh, just here, which we're going to slice up. And then we've got, again, lemon confit and mint leaves. So let's get this one finished first of all, um, just whilst our lemon tart's heating up. So I'm just going to just slice my lemon cake just into some sort of cubes. See all that nice lemon zest going through there. And I'm gonna just dot those around the posset. Get a nice little bit of height on there. This has got like that lovely little lemon drizzle just on the top of it. Then let's get some segments going through there. So just drain them off a little bit as you as you put them on. And again, play with the colours, just so it's sort of nice and nice and even going around it. A bit more orange in there, like so. There we go. And then what I'm going to do a little bit about lemon confit. You see, this is just um, blanched three separate times, um, and then we um, put in stock little stock syrup and just confit it very very slowly on the stove. So there we go. Spread that out, nice bit of confit all over your dessert. And finally, those crystallized mint leaves. So, beautiful crunch, nice and aromatic as well. Can't wait for the lemon verbena to come back in. Um, that's a really nice flavor as well, but not quite in, not quite in season just at the moment. So, I'll make do with the mint for the time being. So, that's our first dessert. Let's just push that to the side, a little clean down. There we go. And then let's move on to our lemon, uh, lemon meringue. So take the tart out. And again, you can serve it cold if you prefer, but I like it when it's like this. It's just um, like a true lemon meringue pie, kind of just been taken out of the oven, cooled down. So let's take my fish slice. Really, really careful now because it will be nice and delicate. Us going onto the plate. Let's get rid of that hot tray out of the way. And then what we're going to do, first of all, take some of your lemon curd. So carefully lift up your, your meringue. You see, I'm going to get the lemon curd and just put that inside. Okay, you don't need much. Maybe sort of like you know a teaspoon, or if you really love lemon curd, get as much in as you dare. And then take your little yoghurt mousse, cut the end off a piping bag, and then top that in there, you see? Just like so. So, that's then, just gonna very, very carefully invert, just on the top of our meringue. And then what I'm gonna do, see I've got my mint leaves, I'm just gonna dip 
them just in a touch of the lemon curd. Let's get those out onto our board. And then that's just gonna help stick them and just garnish that outside of the meringue. There we go. So, another one on there. Let's just get one more before we get some of our comfy lemon. There we go, that's enough. A little clean down, we'll save those for another time. And then back to our comfy. Bit of comfy over the top. And there we go. So this is nice because it adds that little chewy texture around the outside of the meringue. So there we go. Little lemon comfy. And away you go. So straight to the table with this one now. You can see it just wobbling on the top of as that little yogurt cream is just, just starting to melt as it gets to the table. So about two desserts for you and hope you enjoy the final course. So hope you've enjoyed uh, today. Uh, delicious menu for all of the mums out there. Hopefully they've got their feet up today. Uh, you've done the cooking. Uh, remember we're back next week uh, and going right the way through, tons of spring flavours coming in now. Uh, we've got all the wild garlic which is full on in season, we've got sea herbs coming through. Uh, so check out the website for future menus, hope you've enjoyed this week, best wishes and see you soon.